We've got the M2 MacBook Air, the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch, M2 Pro MacBook Pro, and an M2 Max MacBook Pro. These are all 16 inch machines. I'm gonna skip the getting started Docker thing and jump right into a bigger test uh, that we usually do on the channel here, but it's been updated and I'll get into that in a moment and what the benefits are of that. So this is the app in case you wanna run this yourself and test it out to see what you get on your machine. I'll link to it down below. It's the Docker samples example voting app and it's pretty cool because it has five machines that talk to each other, five Docker containers that talk to each other, but you can scale that up, of course. I'm gonna try that too. We're gonna scale the worker process this in .NET to as 100 instances, for example. So we've got a Python machine, we've got a Node machine, a Redis cache, a Postgres SQL machine, and a .NET worker. All those things are gonna be working in tandem to run this app. We're gonna actually take a look at how long it takes to download and set up the machine because these two brand new machines machines have a Wi-Fi 6E and I have a separate Wi-Fi 6E test comparing it to the old Wi-Fi. We'll see if that helps any, but you only do that once, right? The uh, the things that matter the most are the things you do iteratively, which is putting down the containers, uh, bring them back up, things like that. So we'll compare all that stuff. I'm going to max out all the available resources on each machine. They all have different amounts of resources available. So keep that in mind. For example, the M1 Max and the M2 Max have 64 gigs of RAM available. This one has 10 cores. This one has 20 12 cores because it's the new one. This one is a 12 core machine, M2 Pro, but it has 16 gigs of RAM. And the MacBook Air has 24 gigs of RAM and it's the M2 chip with eight cores. So we are working with different things, but yeah, that's what we got. Now, I'm not understanding why Docker is only allowing eight CPUs to be used on this machine that has 12 cores. Let's have a look at the M2 Max. This one allows 12. So we're gonna hop up to 12 on this one. I find that really odd. You can see that the M2 Pro does have 12 cores available. So Docker is not allowing to use four of them. Hey, I don't know why. Hey, Brett. Hey, Alex. Brett's a Docker captain, and he's got his own YouTube channel, too. I'll link to it down below if you want to check it out. You might be seeing the differences because of Apple's virtualization framework changes. Docker Desktop now has a setting in there to enable or disable that versus the traditional virtualization for Linux that Docker Desktop does. And then the other setting is the unsolved problem of the I.O. of files back and forth between Mac and Linux. If you go into settings, you'll find on a Mac, not on Windows, but on a Mac, you'll see there's these various options for over the years, the different file system libraries that are used and the various performance differences between those. Let's go to this one. This is the M1 Max, and I'm gonna max this out to 10 cores. Memory, uh, 64. <laughs> sure, this one is also gonna get 64. And our little M2 Air. By the way, if you're interested in the M1 tests, um, you can check the channel. I've got a bunch of those. We've got eight cores here, 24 gigs. We don't need to restart this one. So let's apply and restart the big boys. All right, I've set it up so that now now we got the time command, then Docker Compose up is gonna bring up all, well, first it's gonna pull all the images. That's why I'm gonna do these one at a time. And uh, then it's gonna build it, then it's gonna make containers and bring it up, all using the dash D flag, which means it's gonna do it in the background so I can get the time. Let's start with this one. Oh, so by default, this particular demo doesn't work exactly out of the box on Max. And the reason for that is port 5000. Port 5000 is in use by one of the Mac OS we can change that. I'm gonna open this up in VS Code and uh, I'm just gonna look for 5000 and all the instances of where 5000 is used, the port 5000, I'm gonna change that to 5002. This has nothing to do with the performance test. I'm just letting you know if you run into this issue, this is how you would change it. So change 5000 to 5002. I'm gonna go through all the files on all these machines and make sure everything is set to 5002. Fun, right? That's why you should like this video. I'm having to do a lot of this stuff for you. Hit that like button and subscribe. I'll be right back. Let's go. So the M2 MacBook Air took 12.4 seconds. Now we're doing M1 Max MacBook Pro, 13.4 seconds. Now I am expecting these two to be faster because well, they should be pulling the images faster. They're small images though. It's not gonna make that huge a difference, but at least I'd like to see a little bit. 
it. Hmm. 16.6, that one is slower. Now, there is multiple steps going on here. One is downloading and the other one is building and then bringing up the containers. That's why this particular test where I don't have the images already on the machine is a little wonky. I wanna tighten it up a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Finally, this one, the M2 Max. Okay, 13 seconds on that. Now that we have the images already cached locally, what I'd like to do is bring all the containers down and see how long it takes for the containers to come up on all these machines. I'm gonna do that using the down command. All right, and let's do the up command one more time. Now I don't need to wait for the network so I can kick them off all at once. Okay, 6.6 .6 seconds on the M2 MacBook Air, 6.7 seconds on the M1 Max, 7.09 seconds on the M2 Pro, and 6.5 seconds on the M2 Max. They're all very close to each other, pretty insignificant. I'm about to scale up the workers, so we'll see what happens when you do that. But before I do that, I wanna do one more thing, and I'm gonna bring all these down, and then I'm gonna bring them up again, but I'm gonna give it the build flag, which is going to rebuild the images. And I'm just gonna do a force recreate. This flag actually recreates the containers if they're already running, but I don't have any running, so I'll just use this command just in case if I wanna keep going and rebuilding every time I do it, even if there are containers running. All right, let's go. Now, I purposely didn't tell you about something, but it doesn't seem to be having an effect. So I'll get into that in a moment. We got a result, folks. 7.7 .7 on the M2 Air, 7.8 on the M1 Max, 8.6 on the M2 Pro, and 7.3 on the M2 Max. So I'm not gonna bring the containers down now, but I'm gonna run this one more time to see what that looks like, because uh, this might be a typical thing that you would do during the day. So we got eight seconds on the M2, 8.4 on the M1 Max. That MacBook Air is doing pretty well, actually. That's pretty amazing. Ooh, 19.1 seconds on the M2 Pro and 18.0. 09 seconds on the M2 Max. What's up with these M2 Max and Pro machines? <laughs> They're doing much worse. That seems odd. So let's do this one more time. 7.8, 8.3, 19.2, and 17.9. So what's going on here? Well, I left this machine right here, the M2 Max. I was going to demonstrate that I'm using the older version of the example app there. And that version was actually pointing to some older images that were not optimized for Apple silicon. The new version has gotten rid of that and now has all Apple silicon images that it's using. So if you take a look at some previous videos I've done on the channel with Docker and with this particular test, you'll see that the times are very different, especially on the M1 Max. The times were a lot longer in the 40s. Now we're down to eight seconds and this is just from changing the images to Apple silicon. Here, I was expecting this to be longer on the M2 Max, but not on the M2 Pro. The M2 Pro might be having a very different issue altogether. So I'm going to switch to the more recent version of this example voting app on the M2 Max, and we're going to rerun it and see what that gives us. This has to pull all the images down again. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to delete everything. Here we go. Now that's better. 11.8 seconds to pull the images down, build them and start up the containers. Let's uh, run that again with force recreate. We're not pulling down the images, just running what we have. There we go. It's better. Now we got eight seconds, 7.8. So we're about the same time now as the M1 Max. This one, let's see if we can get the M2 Pro to be faster. And unfortunately, no, that's not the case. And this is using the latest code base. If we have a look at, well, I'll give you an example. We've got the worker process, which is a .NET process, and uh, we're about to scale that up. This one, if we take a look at the project file, Oh, this is the older one. <laughs> Let's see if we can pull the latest and get this to go faster. So I'm going to clone that repo and run our build one more time. Hey, these things happen during testing. You might be testing the wrong thing. Make sure you're testing the right thing, Alex, me. Because the newer worker is supposed to have .NET 7, which runs on ARM. Let's rebuild that real quick and see what we get. Okay, we're getting eight seconds now. That could have been it. There we go. Nice. So that took 14 seconds from pulling all the way to building and running the containers. Now I'm gonna rerun it just to get our final time here. And I'm expecting a time around seven or eight seconds here. Let's see, nine. 9.5, come on, M2 Pro. Seriously, folks, this is a really great development machine. Any one of these is actually a really great development machine. We're just splitting hairs here, really. But if you have a lot of containers you're running and you're constantly starting and stopping them, then maybe these little seconds are gonna add up. And we're consistently getting nine seconds here as opposed to eight or seven over here. For our final test, I'm gonna add one more flag and that's gonna be the dash dash scale flag. And we need to pick the instance that we're going to scale 
scale. And I'm gonna scale the worker, that's the .NET worker, to 100. So let's make sure we're down and all our containers are off. And now I have the scale flag with worker equals 100. All right, let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's really, uh, it's really doing it. If we take a look at Docker Desktop and the containers, wow, look at all these containers. All these are being created and started up. It takes a while to do that. They're not even done yet, but they're working on it. Okay, we have a, a winner, a clear winner. The M2 Max finished first, and the M1 Max, then the M2 Air, and this one is still working. This is our problem child right here. Now here's where the difference really shows. Check it out. For the winner, we've got 28.3 seconds on the M2 Pro MacBook Pro, then the M1 Max MacBook Pro at 31.6 seconds, then the M2 MacBook Air at 33.3 seconds, and finally the M2 Pro catches up at 48.8 seconds. Wow. It would also be good to know how long it takes to bring these down, because when you have a lot of containers, sometimes it takes a lot of time to bring them down too. Let's see that. It has to go and work on stopping them and then it has to remove them. That process takes some time too. So we've got, whoa, the MacBook Air wins this one. 6.89 seconds on the MacBook Air, then the M1 Max at 8.1 seconds, then the M2 Max at 8.6, and finally the M2 Pro, the loser of the bunch today at 11.2 seconds. Seriously, anybody at Docker know what's going on here? I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, I know, but I have a feeling there's got to be something up with this particular instance and this the installation and I don't know what it is because I've uh, installed all these fresh. One of those things, every Docker video has something exciting that happens that's unexpected. Docker has worked with Windows and Apple over the years and Apple is behind really. I think they're kind of now the worst compared to Windows and native Linux for getting the file IO to near bare metal performance. One thing that I could think of is memory. These two have a lot of memory, 64 gigs. This one, the MacBook Air has 24 gigs of RAM and this one has 16. So should I try this on an eight gigabyte machine and see if the memory plays a role there? Let's do it. Okay, this is a MacBook Air M2, and this is the base model with eight gigs of RAM. Let's do this one. Time Docker Compose Build. All right, let's do this. Here we go. The moment of truth. Is this little eight gigabyte machine that's the base model going to beat out the M2 Pro? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> You're watching it like I'm watching it live. Well, mine is live. Yours is delayed by a week or so. Oh, 12.8 seconds. Let's do a rebuild. <laughs> 7.9 seconds. So even the little base model MacBook Air M2 is doing pretty well. Now, let's scale this one. This one took its time. One minute and 19 seconds. And this is where it's going to show, of course. So if you're doing more powerful things like this, you're probably not going to be doing it on a MacBook Air. But for usability purposes, for bringing up even five instances of five containers, it's fine. Fine. If we take a look at the memory here, we are using a little bit of swap, but not much, 316 megabytes. Yeah, there's a little bit of memory pressure going on on this eight gigabyte machine, but it's very minimal. Of course, these machines are not doing really heavy work here. They're just basically web server database, and they're just sitting there listening. They're not really doing much work right now. It's a good example of using many connected machines together. So hopefully this was informative and educational. If it was, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. I will see you very soon. Docker, Docker containerize. Keep our applications harmonized. Build it once, then ship it far. Docker is our guiding star. You're still here? I'm sorry about that.